So we have another Transformer Thursday Hasbro Pulse fan stream down in the books now, completed. And while there wasn't too much new stuff that was revealed to us, no new really big figure reveals or anything, we did get a lot of new information that was kind of said in between the lines with the crew. We're going to go over that new information and stuff that you guys may have missed and what we could take away from that. So let's jump into it like we always do here on the Transformer Slag Podcast. And the first thing we're going to be covering, of course, is we had the crew today. We had BMAC, we had Mark, and we had Evan. And they first started off with the HasLab update. What's happening with that HasLab Omega Prime? We pretty much just have about 12 hours left, half a day, until it does conclude. And while a lot of people were hoping for like a Tier 3 reveal or some kind of thing... That would be the, you know, the hope, let's, let's go into the home stretch guys. And here's the tier three. Uh, that was not the case. Um, they're doing something similar to like what they did last year. I would imagine with the death source where we didn't get that reveal until after death source had concluded in his backing. For those that don't remember Peepo and Boder, the two little micro masters that were included with death source as a tier three was actually revealed the day after Death Source is back and concluded and was funded. And so while me personally, I think, you know, to drive up more sales in that last 12 hours and create that FOMO, I think it probably would have been better to reveal it before. But considering it's already backed, I guess they're just going to be like, hey, now we can kind of reveal it whenever because this is backed and it's going to happen. So it's their call. So I imagine there is going to probably be a tier three. We're just going to learn about it after the fact, like they did with Death Source. So it's not it's not unusual for them to do this. They've done it before. Death Source had a lot of backing prior going into the end, so they didn't really have to make a big push. And that's so much the case. What will it be? Wait to see. Um, we move uh, on to now the official reveals of our Walmart exclusive Star Raiders. And the pre-orders going up at that very same time, too. While none of this was breaking news for the stream, it would have been breaking news. It's just, you know, all that stuff got leaked out. So technically, that would have been the big reveal today of the stream, was seeing a lot of this for the first time. But unfortunately, the internet is the internet, and information moves fast, and people always want to get that information as quick as possible. But we did get some new information, though about all these individual characters, and I'll cover that and all of what was said in between the lines. We'll start with Cannonball, uh, designed by Shusan and Mark. Really cool figure, of course, does confirm from Mark that he will be coming with his hammer and claw accessory like the original toy came with and can be stored in his legs like the original Cybertron toy. So that's a really nice touch. It didn't really come across with the images that we had before. Uh, you totally know they're going to be making a Cybertron red alert from this. It is it is just a matter of time. Uh, also confirm that the key that the Cyber Planet key that does come with Cannonball is the Earth key. So also staying true to what that original Cybertron toy came with. A lot of great effort to keep it looking and feeling like the original. Really big props to the Hasbro crew for doing that. Uh, the next one they move on to is the Lockdown, which was designed by Mark and Ajima-san, or as... Uh, Evan calls him Big E. Nice uh, little WWE nod there. Um, the Hasbro crew, uh, they feel like this one is not really animated lockdown, but more so that uh, Hunt for the Decepticons, Revenge of the Fallen lockdown that we got in that micro continuity all those years ago in 2010. Uh, that original toy was designed by uh, Takashi Kuniharu. Mark wasn't sure if Bill Rawley or Eric Siebeneller was involved also with it, so... But we do know that Takashi had a lot to do with that original. This new one here, again, Mark and Ajima worked on channeling that Hunt for the Decepticon version with the head sculpt and everything. So it makes me feel like at some point we probably will get a true animated lockdown. This one just isn't it. This is more that movie verse Hunt for the Decepticon one. Uh, he's actually going to have more paint on him than the photos that we've seen thus far, as well as what was shown in the stream. It's just that's what's available to the photographers at the moment. That was available to them at the moment. The final product will have more silver on the studs and green deco that will be running along it. So stay tuned for that when it gets updated. Uh, we got Filch, our uh, <clears throat> uh, Robots in the Skies 2015 Fembot character designed by Shusan and Mark. Originally working on the mold that was done by Yuya-san with that Kingdom Air Razor. Uh, the idea pretty much of this character was just why don't we have something that could battle with Legacy's 
uh, strong arm figure that they put out. So that's what the push that really made it happen. But otherwise, just a really cool figure, and they're very happy to make it happen. And maybe we'll see more in the future. We get uh, this one's fun because I've I've never heard it pronounced like this out loud before. But I we always called it Farrak. Then we're getting Farak. I mean, who knows? I, I would always hear Farrak because that's how it was pronounced at Bacon from the Bacon crew that originally designed it. I'm hearing Farak now from the Hasbro team, so I don't know what to think anymore. But either way, Farak, as we'll call it here today, it sounds like Farouk from the WWE. Uh, Farak uh, was designed by Mark and Otaku-san, uh, and the original mold was actually uh, also done by Otaku-san and Mark, which was the Cyclonus. The new head was done by Shusan. And what's really cool about this is the fine details in that whole new sculpting that was done for the ship mode. If you actually look the front of the ship, according to Mark, the nose was actually sculpted to look like the front of the ship of that old Marvel Comics for Rock back in the day. Now, they couldn't do the whole alt mode design, that unique ship design, but at least that front part, that lined little blaster at the front of the ship is available in both versions. So that's a nice little Easter egg that's on there that even I missed when we first were talking about it because I was like, oh man, they're just going with something crazy here with that new front nose cone. Uh, the new head sculpt is because Mark is a huge Fleur O'Deary fan, as am I. It's nice to hear someone else praising Fleur O'Deary outside of just me. And uh, Mark just want to kind of channel that early concept prototype Cyclonus design that Fleur O'Deary made before it was cleaned up and made into the modern animation model that we saw with the 86 movie. Uh, that early concept art was actually also used later on for the Cyclonus toy in 1986 and early comic panels of the Marvel Comics also based it off of that early Fleur O'Deary design. So it is kind of, you know, sprinkled in throughout early history of Transformers before that animation model really became the standard of what we think of when we think of Cyclonus today. Uh, Mark felt that the Farak, you know, character, since it was born out of the Marvel comics, uh, that he should have a head that kind of has that DNA from the Marvel comics. So he just used that, uh, instead of it being a straight up repaint of that old Kingdom Cyclonus, which is based off the animation model, they would use something that is from that Fleur O'Deary early designs that was used in the comics and stuff. Also, much like the lockdown, uh, Farrakh is going to have more paint than what we've already seen in photography, so there will be more paint put on this character than what we've already seen, so stay tuned for that. Uh, BMAC also confirmed, granted we saw the listings, but now this is 100% confirmed through him, that there will be one more deluxe and one more leader class for these Star Raiders, so judging by the listings that we got thus far, it will be the deluxe Road Pig and the leader Thundertron. BMAC did mention that during the Farak segment that Thundertron is one of them, so that also kind of double confirms that. Uh, and then we move on to the Target Optimus Prime and Autobot Bullseye that Mark worked on. Uh, the only new stuff that we learned from this, obviously, is that there was a lot of back and forth that they had to do with Target to figure out how they wanted to present this figure. Apparently, they worked with an individual named Ted with Target to make that happen. That might explain why the Optimus has no weapons, per se. I think they probably wanted to go with something that was a lot more neutral as opposed to a war character. Uh, that probably might be part of that whole back and forth. A fun fact was that the deco on the side of the trailer, uh, which is the target shipping trucks, based on the real target shipping trucks, uh, has bullseye emulated as a dog sticking its head out the window of a car and the wind pushing back his ears. So that's a nice little fun fact there in touch that was kept true to the original shipping trucks. Uh, to keep with that neutral lore of the character, uh, Mark mentions that the normally the missile launchers that would be in the shoulders of the Laser Optimus Prime Legacy figure are now storage energy cans, uh, maybe Energon drinks or energy drinks, who knows, that could be used for his fellow target co-workers. So again, sure. And again, that also confirmed by Mark, the turret trailer weapon now becomes a price scanner. So it is what it is. It is, like I said before, retail employee convoy. <laughs> Uh, Mark mentions that he loves the idea of Optimus Prime having a dog companion, much like with this bullseye here, and it's something he'd love to revisit and do more in the future, like Servo from the Rescue Bots. 
And it's nice to hear Mark mention some more Rescue Bots love since we already have quite a few Rescue Bot characters and getting Servo would be a really cool addition. The question is, what would Servo turn into? Because in the show, Servo kind of turned into whatever he needed to turn into, whether it be a drill, a wheelbarrow, or whatever. So uh, it'll be interesting to see how they tackle that figure, considering that Servo really only had like one toy through Rescue Bots, which was that that drill kind of dog. And uh, unless you count also the cardboard cutout that came out with High Tide, the playset. But uh, pretty cool stuff. Again, little things we could piece away from that. They said that next Thursday for the Hasbro Pulse fan stream, BMAC will be showing off the Legacy Wave 2 stuff officially, as well as the pre-orders dropping. Now, we've already seen the Core Class Beast Machines Cheetor, the Deluxe G1 uh, Gears, the Cyberverse Chromia, the Voyager Class uh, Silverbolt, the Shard, also the Deluxe Class we also got to see. We saw the Voyager Class uh, Starscream we already saw. We already saw the Leader Class Triple Changer Sandstorm. So a lot of that we've already seen. But we have not seen the Core Class Beast Wars Dinobot. That's been listings that we saw leaked online for Wave 2. And we have not seen the G1 Sure Shot yet. So those will probably be the new ones that we'll see next week if those don't leak out till then. Let's hope not, but we will see. Um, so there's still two more things that could be brand new items for that live stream. That will be live stream will happen Thursday, March 21st, 2024 at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then BMAC also said that the last week of this March Madness on Thursday, March 28th, 2024 at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. BMAC says that his most favorite item of this whole year will also be revealed. And considering he's a big Decepticon guy and Soundwave guy, hmm, I wonder what it'll be. But we will see. So that's it more or less for what we got from the fan stream. Hope you got some of the new info out of that, at least, in between the lines of everything else that was seen and done. And uh, again, that HasLab item is ending in 12 hours or so. So if you are interested, I suggest you back it. And I am guarantee there's going to be probably some kind of Tier 3. So if you don't back it and it's something awesome and you get that FOMO, I'm going to feel sorry for you. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think. And we'll talk again very soon here on the Transformer Slag Podcast. And as always, thank you for listening.